The following is a podcast from a qualified senior care provider heard on the Answers for Elders radio show. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And we are here with the Director of Education and Culture for Couch Communities, Mr. Benjamin Sermi, who's a social gerontologist and an amazing resource for so many of us that are looking to find, you know, the right culture, purpose, everything like that. And first of all, Benjamin, in this, I want to give hats off to Kelch for having someone like you on staff. Um, You know, you really put the mindfulness and thought process on, you know, what happens in in a day-to-day situation within a community. And, And that, the fact that Kelch invests in someone like you tells me a lot about their interest in, you know, being there for, for their residents and things like that. But I have a question. You're a social gerontologist. What about seniors that live home or aging in place? How did they find that second um, opportunity? How did, what are some alternatives? Well, first, I will say there's a bit of a myth around aging in place. Aging in place means to age in a residential suburban home. Aging right. in place means to it means to age wherever you will thrive. So right. That we all kind of come from the same space that every senior should be where they will thrive. Mm-hmm. They will be able to accomplish their purpose. And so keep that in mind because it may not be. You know, and it's interesting too. talk about a shift. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of seniors that are in their seventies that are now downsizing. They're getting rid of the family home that is burdensome, you know, and they're Mm -hmm. finding new opportunities to live independently in like senior apartments or, you know, um, yeah, CCRCs where they start out as independent and things like that. Are I'm sure you're finding that. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. But to go back, let's say a senior has chosen. You know, I think my purpose in life, the thing I really care about, is being a blessing to my neighbors on the street I've been in for 40 years. Yeah. I want to keep offering cookies to the grandkids. I want to keep sitting on the porch and talking with my neighbors. This is where I need to be. Right. Mm-hmm. Well. That's great. And the point is to identify what is my purpose in being here, because otherwise, if my purpose is just to live in my home as long as possible, what I have seen is elders will live as long as possible in their home watching Judge Judy. Like that Mm -hmm. is their whole life. Judge Judy and Price is Right in my home. Yay. Congratulations. I lived in my home till I was 90. Right. Yeah. To me, most of us look at that and go, oh, crap, I do not want that to be my life. Right. But instead, I can have a purpose in my head. Now, this is what I want to accomplish. This is what I want to enjoy or share or do. Mm-hmm. If my home and where I live supports me in that, if I can yeah. still engage in the community mm-hmm. that matters to me and they're not all, sure. there's not a barrier because I can't drive to them, you know, then great. Yeah. And I think technology has helped us a lot mm-hmm. to connect yes. with people too. So what yeah. about a caregiver? What about someone that is taking care of a loved one? Mm-hmm. They may have lost their career. They may have lost friends. Mm-hmm. They may have lost their social life. Um, what do you say to them? Well, I think they have two different purposes, right? They have their own purpose, like things that I personally want to do in my life that matter to me. But then there's also the purpose of what do I want this relationship to look like with mm-hmm. this person I'm caring for? right? Yeah. Because there's going to be different answers there, right? Sure. I want as little relationship as possible because I really don't like this person, but that, you know, and this is what I want it to be like, mm-hmm. right? Or, this is my mom. And what matters to me is us being able to go shopping and antiquing together. Like yeah. we've always done that. Well, then my caregiving plan needs to kind of to be- include that. Yes, not just include, but build around it. Like if antiquing is so hard to do because I'm keeping my mom at home until yeah. she dies, right? Then maybe that ends up going away. Whereas if I moved her into a co-housing situation or senior living or some other situation that had a van that was wheelchair accessible, now me and my mom can go and taking as often as we want. That exactly. Made- right? Exactly. And so- I think what you're saying is so vital in the fact that, you know, first of all, just because you're t- caring for a loved one, even a spouse, I, I s- see lately so many spouses that are caring for, you know, a, a loved one that may have dementia or Alzheimer's, something like that. I'm um, what I found often is that they lose themselves and 
to be mindful of not doing that, finding ways of bringing in, it, whether it's in-home care into the home or move into a community where you can still stay together and you can do what you need to do and still be somebody's wife or husband while that other person is getting care during the day. And I think those are the things that we're afraid to do. Um, and, you know, Benjamin, we're going to talk in our last segment coming up next a little bit more about the options for seniors to find that purpose. And so in the meantime, everyone, you can reach Kelch Communities at kelchcommunities.com or call 360-867-1900. And Benjamin will be right back with me right after this. We at Answers for Elders thank you for listening. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com. 